you know what this is like you're basically on a journey and you just book your tour yeah it hurt right now but you'll get better eventually and you just have to keep on chatting Now, most times, there are two reasons, you know, why that happened. The first is that you may have had low expectations for the exam. Probably you're thinking that it's just some other test that you have to do. Or you may not have been practicing the right things. Let me tell you what I mean. There, I, I, I knew a student who, she, every now and again, she used to ask me for help, right? But whenever they asked for help they always used to send me questions based on numbers like consumer arithmetic and stuff like that and statistics so those were the only things they were practicing so when they got into the exam yeah them shell question one and seven but everything else went downhill so sticking to the topics you're good at will work against you when preparing for your exams so what's your next move go again do it do it this year. Don't let it pass you. You just learned all of that. So it's going to be fresher in your mind. There are two options. You can either redo the entire exam or do the reset. In the reset, it's usually held in January. You can either get signed up at your center or you can sign up with the overseas exam commission. The other option is to redo the subject. And the good thing is that you can carry forward your SBA grade. As a matter of fact, you can carry forward that grade for a maximum of two years. So if you're going to take that route, make sure that you find a good class, find all the past papers, and set up a schedule to help you go forward and practice. Now we can say that there are three steps that you need to take to pass the next math exam. The first is your attendance. I heard one person say one time that six is probably the hardest thing that you have to do. And I feel like I want to agree with that. You need to go to the classes to ensure that you're getting the content. If you really have a busy, unpredictable schedule, then join a class that has the recorded sessions and make sure that you follow through and do. Step two, it's all about hard work. The good thing is you did the exam, so you probably know your weak areas. You probably know that you don't like vectors, trigonometry, bearings, you can identify what those are so you know what you need to work on. Usually people would practice by getting workbooks and working in them, but I find that uh, especially when you want to know if you're right, that might kind of be hard because you might have to go to your teacher and they might not have your time and whatever. So if you use something like my math camp, then you get tons of practice and CXC questions and you get feedback right away to know exactly what you need to do to improve and you can do past paper questions and stuff like that. So practice is key. The third step, it's kind of like a 2A or 2B, is to practice problem solving. When we look on the student profiles across the region, one of the things that usually brings students down is their reasoning. You need to have what's called a growth mindset. It's not that persons are born with this super uh, uh, impossible ability to just be good at math and you weren't born with it so that means you can't do it forever not no go so you can get there but you have to work hard it is possible and once you have that mindset whenever you meet on roadblocks in problem solving then it will spur you to continue going so that you can keep on improving so if you want more math content or help with math you can subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit the notification bell so that when we release new stuff, you'll get access to that. And I look forward to seeing you. Big up.